What's up YouTube? This is Demkeys back again with another Unity tutorial and today I'm going to teach you how to use touches and the accelerometer when developing Android games with Unity. I will also teach you how to use Unity Remote. I would like to thank Alejandro Gorgal. I hope I said that right. Uh, I was unable to get Unity Remote to work but after watching his tutorial on Unity Remote my doubts were cleared and because he actually mentioned certain things that for some reason even Unity didn't uh, find necessary to mention. Uh, so yeah, I was able to test my games using Unity Remote thanks to him. I have provided uh, a link to his channel in the description below. Okay, what is Unity Remote? Unity Remote is an application that allows you to use your Android device as a remote control for your project in Unity. This is useful during development since uh, it is much quicker to test your project in the editor with the remote control than to build and deploy it uh, to the device after each change. So basically what you can do is run your game once you're, you've connected Unity uh, sorry, once you've connected your device and you're running Unity remote properly what you will be able to do is run your game on your uh, system uh, the system on which you are developing the game you can just hit play and the game will not only play on your system it will also play on the device that is connected to your system the device that you have unity remote running on so in this case if you have added uh, functionality for things like uh, touch or um, use of the accelerometer you can actually test these things out it's it's very easy I'm going to show you how to do that um, where can you download unity that would be uh, well since I'm using Android so in this case the Google Play Store Play Store sorry the <laughs> the Google Play Store uh, is it free yes they do not charge you for it at all now how to use it before you use unity there are some things some very important things that you need to keep in mind um, again for some reason unity did not mention these things because of which me and I'm sure a few other people also had problems uh, okay so first of all you install the Android SDK I don't know how important this step is I'm really not sure if uh, Unity Remote will work properly without the Android SDK once I explain these steps to you you can go ahead and uh, uh, you can go ahead and try using Unity Remote even on a system that doesn't have Android SDK if it works it works if it doesn't well install Android SDK so yeah first step install Android excuse me just a minute sorry about that I should have kept my phone on silent okay so first step you install the Android SDK second you install the USB drivers for the device that you want to use for example in my case I am using uh, a Samsung Galaxy Tab 2 10.1 um, I had to go on I had to search on Google uh, specifically for USB dri drivers for this device uh, it wasn't that easy so you'll have to you'll have to find the, the USB drivers on your own if your system has the drivers or if your system is able to download the drivers on its own good for you but uh, if your system is not able to download them then you will need to find them on your own uh, for some reason even using Samsung Kais or keys I don't know how do you pronounce that word for some reason even downloading and installing that did not help my USB drivers issue all I had to download was like a hundred KB file which was basically the USB driver and after that everything was fine so yeah that is your second step third step 
make sure you have USB debugging uh, enabled on your Android device. I'm not going to explain how to do this because different devices probably have different ways. Of course, I could be wrong about that as well. Google it, it's not that hard. Trust me. Uh, next, you have to download Unity Remote from the Play Store onto your Android device. This will be the device that you want to use Unity Remote with. Um, okay, now these steps are fine. Uh, these steps are even mentioned on probably on Unity's website. Some important things that they forgot to mention. All right, you have let's say you have installed the Android SDK, you have the USB drivers, you have USB debugging enabled and you installed Unity Remote as well. Now you expect that when you hook up your device to your uh, PC and you run Unity Remote uh, and then when you run your, your game in Unity something should show up on your uh, Android device that doesn't happen. See, there's a certain way how you have to, uh, well there's a certain procedure you have to follow. You have to do things in, in order. Uh, this is the order. First you connect both the devices, that is your Android device and your uh, PC. Second you install, uh, you, sorry, you start Unity Remote on your Android device. And then you start Unity in your PC. Uh, if you reverse this order or uh, you know do one before the other or somehow if you mix up the order it's not going to work. So yeah this is the important thing that Unity forgot to mention. And again thank you Alejandro. Uh, I have already mentioned my device is a Samsung Galaxy Tab 2 10.1. Uh, I think that's it. We can begin. Yep. Okay. So, I have a small level designed over here. Uh, I have uh, a background object, a player, two plat platforms, uh, and a ground object. And of course, there's our camera. Uh, the reason why why I made these platforms is uh, because we are going to make the player jump. So, well, I wanted them there. So, anyways, uh, where was I? Yeah, we are going to start by adding a movement script to our player. We'll call this movement script. You can name it whatever you want. Okay, so now we will create three variables uh, of public float type um, x force, y force, and direction. Okay. Now let's set the value for direction. Uh, for this, we will use input dot acceleration. I will explain this in a in a little bit. Just first, let me show you how it's working. Sorry, input dot acceleration dot y into x force. We will set the value of x force later from the inspector panel. And what do we do next? Rigid body two d dot add force. Uh, 
vector two dot I think right should work into direction. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, that should work. Okay, for some reason it's not showing up over here. Oh, there it is. Okay. So, we set X force to... This is force, not translate. So, the value should be a little higher. Let's keep it 25. And let's now test our game. I am pressing play. However, to control the character... Uh, sorry, to control the player, I'm going to use my... Uh, tablet. Well, you can't see it, but uh, I'm <laughs> I'm I'm using my tablet. Uh, so yeah, this works perfectly. Uh, let me explain that line to you. Okay, so direction is a float type variable. Input dot acceleration. What does this do? Acceleration, uh, according to Unity, is the last measured linear acceleration of a device in three-dimensional space. It, this line might be a little confusing to some people. I know terms like linear acceleration would be confusing to me as well. Uh, basically, input dot acceleration tells you or gives you the device's orientation. It tells you whether the device is being held tilted or well it gives you the result in numbers but as you move your device if you tilt it to the left or you tilt it to the right or uh, tilt it upwards downwards whatever the values will constantly keep changing uh, the values change along the x y and z axis so this is how you can actually track uh, the movements of the of the tablet or the rotation of the tablet whatever you call it and then you can use this to control your player. That's what I just did. Now you must be wondering, although I... Okay, let me remove this because this might be a little confusing for some people. Uh, let me use something simpler. There. So, uh, we are applying uh, direction which is basically our force we are applying force along the x-axis but why did I use why did I use input dot acceleration dot y now if you have studied about quaternions and rotations and stuff with unity you will know that when you talk about rotation along the y-axis you basically mean that the object is either rotating left or rotating right. And when you talk about uh, rotation along the x-axis, you mean that the object is rotating frontwards or backwards or upwards or downwards, whatever you call that. And z rotation is... Well, you get the point. So, uh, in this case, if I were to tilt my tablet towards the right side, I I am actually tilting it along the x-axis in a positive value. So the, the value will be anywhere between 0 and plus 1. And so that's the reason why when that is multiplied with x force, you get a positive value. And that value is applied to uh, our x-axis. I hope that was clear enough for you. Next, we will make our player jump. Okay, there's a couple of different methods to, to do this. There are long complicated ones. There are even simpler ones. I decided to go with the simpler one uh, because that will save time. Uh, I, I think I'll even teach you the, a slightly more complicated but equally useful method. Uh, let's go with the simple one first. What was the simple one? 
Oh shit, I forgot. If input wait, if input dot touch count. Yep, if input dot touch count is equal equal to one. So basically we are comparing it, comparing the value of uh, touch count with one. If it is one, then rigid body 2D dot add force. Uh, new vector 3 vector 2 I think yeah it takes vector 2 why did I put vector 3 over here okay uh, this time we won't be applying force along the x axis we'll be applying it along the y axis so we're going to use our y force variable now what does input dot touch count do input dot touch count uh, unity describes it as the number of touches guaranteed not to change throughout the frame uh, I think this gives you the number of touches per frame uh, for me usually it comes one I think if you touch with two fingers it might come two uh, I think that's how it works but yeah basically when you touch it once there will be one it will not be zero it will be one so our if statement says if input dot touch count is equal to one then add force along the y-axis pretty much making our player jump uh, I think this force should be something small 15. Let's see. Yep, it works. Uh, oh, oh, just, <laughs> just a minute. Yeah. Now it should be fine. As you can see, our player is able to move and jump. I am controlling the player currently with my tablet. I'm not using any keys, I'm not using the mouse. okay what more remains I said I would teach you a slightly complicated method hmm okay if no for each for each touch touch in input dot touches this will this statement will basically create uh, a small list I think and that list will have I don't know if I'm explaining that right it's going to uh, count or it's going to create a variable named touch for each touch that exists within touches uh, as you can see touches is an array so it can have more than one touch just a minute Okay, Unity says input dot touches returns list of objects representing status of all touches during the last frame, and it's read only. Each entry represents a status of a finger touching the screen. Um, I'm not sure how many fingers my tablet can respond to at once, 
but I would imagine that this no no I cannot imagine a limit on this uh, anyways how do we use this hmm for each touch I guess I can add the same line here as well Let's see if this works. Yep, it still works. It seems to be responding faster than that if statement. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess it's more sensitive. But yeah, this works as well. Uh, of course, they both have their own different uses. You wouldn't use an if statement for the same reason that you would use a for each because if they both had the same uses, then you wouldn't have two different statements or two different conditions. Yeah. So yeah, you can use for each for a different purpose. And uh, the, the if statement was basically just counting the number of touches. In this case, when you have... Uh, the array of touches you actually have more detail like for example let me create a vector 3 called position or say finger position for each where's my cursor here okay for each yeah finger position equals touch dot position touch dot position is a vector 2 okay no problem I'll change okay so now we have where is it there. Now we have a public a public variable named finger position. It's got x and y coordinates. Let's run the game and see what happens when I touch a certain portion or a certain area on my screen. I'm touching various different areas. Don't don't never mind the player. I'm just showing you uh, finger positioning over here now I'm going okay at this point I'm basically just tapping my finger on different portions of the screen and based on that you can see the value changing this is close to the lowest value close to the lowest value and from there I can increase keep going higher and higher at this point I'm dragging my finger uh, across the screen and I've almost reached the end so yeah this is uh, another useful thing that you should know uh, I think this is yes this would be just a minute okay yeah uh, this would be uh, this would also be one of the uses of uh, using for each and getting the entire list of touches you can do this what more I think that's it am I missing something I taught you about touches uh, I'm sorry I had to keep this tutorial fairly simple in techniques this is uh, just to help people get started off because quite honestly I just started learning this yesterday uh, one of my viewers requested that I do a tutorial on character movement in with Android I, I can't remember his exact words but he said something something similar to this he wanted to learn character movement using Android and he did not mention whether it was supposed to be in 2d or 3d space uh, I preferred 
3D, uh, I prefer 2D because it's more simpler to explain. So yeah, I when I read his request, I went and started doing research and I learned how to install the Android SDK. I actually installed the ADT, not the SDK. Uh, that's Android Developer Tools. Uh, and after that, I did a bunch of things and here's the funny part. I, until, un, uh, until this point, I did not know that Unity Remote existed. Uh, what happened was, I, I was having some trouble with uh, uh, building my Android game. I wasn't sure how to get the, how to get Unity to find my Android SDK so that it can build my game. And so I was poking around here and there. I happened to reach here. When I saw Unity Remote, I started playing around with it. And then I googled Unity Remote and found out it's actually an application that you install on your Android device. And then I did more and more research and it seemed exciting because, I mean, come on, you can test out your application in this way. Who, who won't find it exciting? So, well, you will find it exciting if you've never done this before. And yeah, I've never done it before. So it was something new for me. So yeah, uh, sorry if I wasn't able to give you a very advanced tutorial. It's because I don't know any advanced stuff about this. I just started learning it yesterday. So I hope this tutorial was helpful. Hopefully it's going to uh, help beginners in uh, certain problems that they are having. It, it might help people get started off. You can use these ideas and build off of them and do whatever you want. Uh, so yeah, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I will see you guys next time.